What is up you guys? In this one, I'll show you how to use Python to analyze some cryptocurrency momentum and leverage crypto through some useful performance metrics like volatility, correlations, returns, price change, and more. But before I do so, I would like to bring your attention to a super useful trading platform that comes with a lot of benefits. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Composer. Composer is an automated trading platform that allows anyone to build a portfolio of hedge fund-like strategies. Composer lets you systematically invest using a no-code visualizer to build and backtest investing strategies and then execute trades automatically. It's like algo trading without the code. What used to take Python, Excel, and a Bloomberg terminal is now available to anyone and it's free. So what you see here is a massive amount of trading strategies that most likely you know of. You've got, you know, some Buffett or Dalio strategies, as you can see here. Perfect. Those strategies are known as symphonies, right? And let's say you're interested in one, for example, buy the dips NASDAQ strategy. You will have access to this backtest and how it compares with respect to S&P 500, for example. Perfect. Or you can choose to have your own customizable backtest as well. You also have some reported performance metrics like cumulative returns, CalMar and sharp ratios, standard deviations and more. Even more, you have access to your own editor for backtesting so you can create your own rules using if else blocks. So without any coding background, you can have an automated backtesting that is customized for you and only you. I find this awesome for people that have no coding experience or, you know, you just want to get rid of your Excel or any type of, you know, spreadsheet that you use to document different data. So to sign up, please consider using the link down in the description section below as it highly benefits the channel. The link is cmpsr.co forward slash ab. That's cmpsr.co forward slash AB. And after creating your own account, you can then fund it using most of the well-known or major banks. So feel free to try out Composer by yourself and happy investing. So without further ado, let's get started on analyzing some cryptocurrency prices. Right. So first thing on Google Collab, I'm going to rename my notebook to something like crypto analysis right and next i'm going to you know start by importing different modules that we're going to use along the way such as pandas call it aspd give it an alias i'll import y finance as yf i'll also be importing seaborn to plot the correlation matrix as sns and I'll import matplotlib to plot some cryptocurrency prices. Give this a run. Now we've got an error here saying no module named Y Finance. And for that, you'd have to run exclamation mark as running in your terminal. Pip3 install Y Finance. Give this some time. Now that this is done, um, we can first start by, you know, creating a, an array of cryptocurrencies, right? Um, let's say I'm interested in Dogecoin, so Doge-USD, because I'll be interested in the price of Doge according to USD. I'll also be interested in Bitcoin, Ethereum as well, and last but not least, Ripple, okay? Let's run this, okay, good. So next I'll be, you know, getting my data, that is YF, I'll be using the Y Finance, so yf.download will be getting all the cryptocurrencies that we defined in this table right here, right? We should define a start date. So let's say the start date is the first day of 2020. So I believe it goes first as year, then month, then day. Then I'll define an end date. So let's put 2022 and 30th of March. Okay, then run this. Now we have all the data. Now let's, you know, just since this is a pandas data frame, I'll check the head. And there you can see, of course, this is just the head. And that's why I get five rows. But you get 24 columns where, let's say, you've got the adjusted closing price for Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, given as such per day. You've also got the same thing, closing price, high price, low price, opening price, and the volume 
being traded okay so here's some data that we've got for each cryptocurrency bitcoin dogecoin ethereum and ripple so next thing i want to tell you is okay let's say you're interested in i don't know maybe one of those guys let's say the adjusted closing price well how do we read that from pandas so i'll pass in let's define a variable called adjust underscore close data and i'll pass ADJ, the same name it, it shows over here. So ADJ space close as such. Let's say I only want to check the head because this is also a, a pandas data frame. So as you can see, this table right here corresponds to the, these numbers right here, right? Okay, now let's say you want to be more visual and plot for each cryptocurrency, that is you want to plot for Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Ethereum, and Ripple, the adjusted closing price as a function of the day. We can easily get this done on a big plot. Let's say you want a two by two plot that it contains four figures, right? Um, well, you can do this using PLT, so matplotlibs PLT, the plot dot subplot, because we're subplotting right here. We need two by two, right? And then you would return the figure and the axis, right? So for the first subplot, so if I do this, they're empty, right? So for the first subplot that is right here, this guy is indexed as zero, zero, right? Like you do with a matrix. Imagine this guy is a matrix and you're indexing, you start your indexing by zero, right? So this is zero, zero throw, zero th column. So for here, you would want to plot the adjusted closing price of Dogecoin, right? And that's it. So here's the plot, but I don't like the plot since it's very small, right? It's very small. And to get rid of this, by the way, to get rid of this, you would have to call at the end plot.show and this guy disappears. Now, the plots are really small. You can actually control the entire figure size right um over here subplots actually has the number of rows number of columns and you've got all those options one of those options and i'm not sure it's defined here um let's scroll down the documentation okay i don't see a figure size um okay but i'm sure you can pass it something like this so fig size you can say i don't know 10 by 10 let's see what that gives okay so this is big this is really big let's do something like 10 by 5 okay and let's do now 15 by 5 okay this is better okay and you can give each subplot a title so you can go axis dot i don't know uh, set title um dodge and there you go here's the title i'm going to copy paste this guy three more times two three four and i'm going to index things properly so this is this guy is zero one, so I'll go zero one. This guy is one zero, I'll do one zero. And this guy is one one, right? So I'll do one and one. Now over here, we'll be doing Bitcoin. Over here, we'll be doing ETH. And right here, we'll be doing Ripple XRP. So I'll correct the tickers right here, the ticker names, and I'll run. And there you go. This is Bitcoin right here. You see another cycle. Um, this is XRP. This is ETH. Um, by the way, I don't know if you've noticed, but this XRP is overlapping with the, you know, the X labels of the Bitcoin. We would want more space between the subplots. So for that, um, if we take a look at the subplots arguments, so subplots right here, as we saw, takes all those arguments. You've got something called grid spec underscore KW, right? And what this guy is, is that it's a dictionary with keywords passed to the matplotlib dot blah, 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 constructor used to create the grid, the subplots are placed on. So we can do something like this. We could pass it this argument, grid spec underscore KW, and it's a dictionary. So it will take some values like H space that is horizontal space. Um, for the horizontal space, I really don't care. I'll just pass it some, some vertical space. So let's do 0 0.1. There's an error over here and there. So let's pass some W space 0 0.1 let's do 0 0.5 let's do 1.5 oh so the w space is for this well let's do let's return this guy back to 0 0.1 and let's some let's pass some h space um let's put 0 0.5 and there you go the xrp is separated from the x-axis from here as well as the 
ETH, okay? Um, another thing you might be interested in is the returns that is related to the, you know, the percentage, the percentage change and the adjusted closing prices. So in stock analysis and crypto analysis, um, people tend to look at the percentage change of the closing price or the adjusted closing price. So to get that done on Python, you'd want to, or in pandas in particular, you'd want to use PCT, which stands for percentage underscore change. So this guy's a function. And as you can see, the first row is zero because the percentage change is something relative. So what, what, what happens here is that each row takes a look one time unit backwards. So it makes sense that the first row takes a look at nothing <laughs> to the back. And that's why you see over here and an AN, not a number. So this is, these are missing values, right? Um, each row, so for example, the second row compares the current value versus the value that comes one day before and calculates the percentage change based on that. So to avoid those missing values, you can then run dot, you know, drop NA and pass axis equal to zero. If you do so, then you'd simply omit the rows that do not contain a number, right? So let's save this guy in returns since we'll be using it um, afterwards. Well, now let's say you would want to reproduce the same figures, but instead of the adjust adjusted closing price, you'd want to plot the returns, right? So for that, I'm going to simply copy paste all this block of code that I had right here. And instead of the adjusted closing price, I'll pass returns as such, right? And right here, I'll put returns on Dogecoin, returns on Bitcoin, returns on Ethereum, and returns on Ripple, right? And that's basically it. So if I run this block of code, and there you go. You can see the returns per day of, your, of the cryptocurrency of interest. So you see the Dogecoin, this particular day over here had a very big spike. And I think that's the day where Elon Musk was, you know, promoting Dogecoin on his Twitter account and other social media accounts, right? Um, here's Bitcoin, right? So Bitcoin is uh, being steady. You've got the Ripple right here and you've got Ethereum right over here, okay? Um, now let's say you're interested in knowing some volatility about your cryptocurrency. That is, you're not only interested in the Dogecoin return prices or the adjusted closing prices, but you would like to have more insights about how risky it is to invest in this cryptocurrency. Right. So for that, we'll be using histograms and we'll be plotting the returns on a histogram. So as I did before, I will be using all this block of code exactly the same. Right. Um, but this time, instead of a plot, OK, instead of a plot, I'll be using hist, hist for histogram. So I'll do this for all four. And right here, I'll use the title histogram of returns on Dogecoin. OK, likewise here for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. Run this block of code. As you can see, we don't see many bins, right? So Hist has, I think, another option. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it is bins. So let's say I do that only for Dogecoin. I pass 100 bins. There you could see it's, it's, it's more discretized. And let's say you'd like to look only in a window. We could see here already at minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, we have enough information and everything outside could be considered as outliers. So for that, you can pass a range. I believe it's done as such and pass the limits. And there you go. I'm going to replicate the same thing for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Ripple. So I'll copy paste this guy three more times as such. Cool. So this would give you an idea about the volatility simply by, you know, measuring, you know, your standard deviation using well-known statistical tools. So now last but not least, before you know, before we call this a tutorial on cryptocurrency analysis, let's now see if there's any correlation between different cryptocurrencies. So to achieve this on Python, we start by the returns and then we compute the correlation as such. So you need the correlations. We store it in something called CORR, 
that stands for correlation. And then I'm going to use this package that I have up here, which is super useful for, you know, visualizations such as in our case, I'll be using the well-known heat map because I'm plotting a correlation matrix and it makes sense to, you know, visualize the different correlation metrics in a simple heat map. So I'll go SNS or Seaborn dot heat map and I'll pass it the correlation values as such. As you can see, we see no numbers. It's just a heat map. You can see we have one for Bitcoin with itself, Dogecoin with itself. Now this is very trivial, right? You're always going to have maximal correlation when you're correlating with yourself. Now you've got some options over here to make this more explicit. Um, I believe you could pass if um, we take a look at this description, we've got Let's see. Ah, and not, and not, let's set it to true. So, sorry. So that we could see the correlation values, right? And then you could set, if you find those colors really heavy, you would want something else. You can pass the C map to something like blues so that you have a better, you know, you could see that, oh, Ethereum and Bitcoin are highly correlated with each other. Actually, they're the, they have the highest correlation with each other compared to Dogecoin and Ripple. Right. Of course, we're not going to take those ones on the diagonal because it doesn't make sense to, to claim that Bitcoin actually it's really trivial that Bitcoin is correlated with itself or dodges with itself, Ethereum and Ripple. Right. And that is basically it. So I hope you found this tutorial beneficial. If you did, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions whatsoever, kindly leave a comment down in the comment section below. I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible. I'll see you then.